Okay, welcome back to this presentation on e-cigarettes. We just covered the health effects and looked closely at how the chemicals affect your health. What I wanna do is start by looking at this question. So the reason why young people may have withdrawal symptoms right away is because that is a sign that they're addicted to nicotine, but also there's so much nicotine in these pods or cartridges, it can increase someone's chances of becoming addicted immediately to nicotine and they would have these withdrawal symptoms. So this slide helps to shed light on how much nicotine is actually in these devices. So we just have a few examples here on the screen. And what I want to do is I want to start with looking at cigarettes. For each cigarette, someone's taking in about 1.5 to 1 milligrams of nicotine. So just for simplicity, what we're going to say is that for each cigarette, it's about one milligram of nicotine. And if you were to multiply that by 20 or the amount of cigarettes in a pack, it would be 20 milligrams of nicotine. So one Joule pod is equal to 41.3 milligrams of nicotine. For each milligram of nicotine, that is one cigarette's worth of nicotine, okay? So this would be equal to about 41 cigarettes. So if you think about the potential for addiction here, someone is using something closer to about one and a half to two packs of cigarettes in terms of the amount of nicotine. If someone is just using one pod during the weekend, that's still a lot of nicotine that someone is exposing their body and brain to. Now let's look at a puff bar. If we were to do the math, this is about 50 cigarettes worth of nicotine. Lastly, one Soren pod contains something close to 90 cigarettes worth of nicotine. So a Soren pod's different because it's not pre-filled like a Jewel pod or puff bar, but if someone were to use the salt-based nicotine e-juice from the Soren company, uh, let's say it's a salt-based nicotine that's as concentrated as puff bar and Jewel pod, this is how much nicotine would be in it. But the key takeaway is that these pods contain high levels of nicotine. And remember, the way it's able to deliver nicotine so non-invasively is through that salt-based nicotine. So that reducing that harshness of the throat hit. Let's look inside the brain to see how nicotine is behaving and how it's creating a response. So what you're seeing on this slide are two brain cells that are communicating with each other. And they are using acetylcholine, which is a messenger chemical that we produce in our brain. And what's happening is one cell or one brain cell is using that to communicate with the neighboring brain cell. So here are some acetylcholine chemicals represented by blue dots. And nicotine actually mimics or looks like acetylcholine. So what it can do is create a similar response as acetylcholine. So in this animation that I want to replay for you real quick, you'll see that it's binding to the same receptors. And this is creating a chain reaction, which is ultimately releasing something called dopamine in the brain. Now, dopamine is the pleasure chemical that the brain produces. We fire dopamine whenever we do something that is important for survival. So whenever we eat food, whenever we sleep, whenever we exercise, there is a firing of dopamine in the brain. So this chemical is released. And if someone continues to do this to the brain to try to fill this artificial pleasure, then it will basically dampen the effects of the drug. That's what ends up happening for people who become addicted to drugs is that they just end up using that drug to fill less of the withdrawal symptoms. And that's because the brain learns how to dampen the drug effects over time. Now we are going to watch a video similar to the last section. I want you to pay attention to how drugs, especially nicotine, affect the brain when someone's using it and how it can hijack someone's so-called survival hierarchy, which will be explained more in the video. So enjoy.